solid-based peptide synthesis and its role in understanding energy dynamics. And I worked at um, Queen's College with Dr. Kumar, who was my mentor. Okay, so the objectives of the research. So first, basically, we wanted to create um, artificial polypeptide chain. We wanted to react these chains that we made with the enzyme NAK through kinase. And then we wanted to apply this research in creating various inhibitors. Okay, so basically to understand the research that I did, you really have to have an understanding of the basics. So what are proteins? Proteins are large, complex, organic molecules. And a lot of proteins are enzymes. These enzymes are really important because they are like the center of our like processes. Basically, every chemical reaction that goes in the body is helped by enzymes. And enzymes catalyze these reactions by lowering the activation energy required to start the enzyme, and then basically they provide the environment for the reaction to happen. And then the type of enzyme that I work with are kinases, and kinases are a specific type of enzymes. Um, Kinases are a specific type of enzymes, and their job is to basically transfer a phosphate group. Okay, so the building blocks of proteins are amino acids. As you can see here, there's only the center carbon. You have an R group which differs for each amino acid. There's about 20 amino acids that the body needs. And then you have the amine group, and then the carboxyl group. So basically when you make a chain, you have to join one amino acid to the next amino acid. And basically this is the reaction that goes on. As you can see here, what happens is that you take out two hydrogen atoms and an oxygen atom to make a water molecule. And then this side basically connects with this side to make this chain. And you have to keep on doing that for like about 10 amino acids until the chain is done. Okay, so the materials that are needed for my project. So you have the various amino acids, and when you buy them, they're actually, well basically they're in powdery form, and that's why it's called solid phase, because, and then you have solution phase, but I don't really work with that. And then you have um, the agents that help catalyze this reaction. You have like all these, and they have really long, complex names. And then you have like the washing agents to help make sure everything is always sterile and clean. Then you have vortex, um, centrifuge, HPLC pump, mass, and then the enzyme itself. And basically, this is the one of the these two are the main ones I work with. That's the mass spectrophotometer, and that's the vortex, and that basically the shape. Okay. okay, so the process of actually joining the nine amino acids. So basically, you have the first amino acid, and that binds to a little substance called a resin. And the resin just has like the basic support. And then basically what you do is you remove the F mock group because when you buy the amino acid, um, you can't just buy it like free, like pretend the amino acid is like phony. You just can't buy that. You have to buy it connected to something so it won't react. So basically you connect it and then you have to remove this group. And then basically you induce the reaction by mixing those various chemicals um, that I mentioned before. So the, and then you join this amino acid, then you have to remove its group, the FMAC group, and then couple the next amino acid, and this keeps on going over and over. Okay, so you basically keep on coupling and then removing, coupling, removing, coupling, removing, until you're basically done. And then you have to separate the resin from the actual polypeptide chain that you made. And then basically high pressure liquid chromatography, this sounds really complicated, but I really didn't get up to that step yet. So basically what it does is it purifies the chain so you only have those substances that you need. And then the process of mass spectro, I can't even say spectrophotometry. That basically helps confirm that all your amino acids are there and that's basically a machine that does the entire thing for you. And if you want to like see like visualize the amino acids, so you have like this amino acid connecting to this one and all the different colors represent the different molecules and it just keeps on going and going. Okay, so how do you connect this enzyme and these chains that we're making to the actual enzyme and the people? 
So this is an enzyme that works to regulate cell growth and cell division. And basically what it does, when the chromosomes separate during the process of mitosis, it helps the spindle form. And the spindle is the structure that makes sure that the chromosomes separate to opposite sides. So right here, between metaphase and anaphase, there's like five digits of um, mitosis. Like between this stage, and this is where you can see the actual spindle being formed. This is where NAK2 kinase works. And this is just another more realistic picture, I guess, of the process of mitosis. Okay, so what the question is, what's the exact molecule that the enzyme works on? And that's what you're trying to figure out. The chain that we're making, we're reacting with the NAK2 kinase. But the question is, we can't actually make the molecule that's inside the human body, so we're trying to find the most ideal in composition that it will work on. And in cancer cells, it's shown that the enzyme is expressed as normally because there's excess enzymes and the molecule and the cells, right? They basically keep splitting and splitting until um, they're overrun, and that's what basically cancer is, which is unregulated cell growth. So after we make the various peptides, I didn't get up to this data because I'm still in the process of making the various peptides that we're doing with um, everyone else in my lab. And then basically, we use radioactive ATP. This type of ATP, it has a special type of marker. And then when you do this type of assay, um, we can actually see it being transferred. Not see it being transferred, but we know that it's been transferred. And then when we find the peptide that works best, which has the highest phosphorylation rate, that's the one that we selected to create an inhibitor for it. And then by basically creating an inhibitor for it, we can stop the enzyme from overacting in cells, in cells that have cancer. Okay, so basically then the, basic, the job is to design a competitive inhibitor and a bisector for the substrate and stop next to from working at such high abnormal levels, levels and basically, hopefully, that this research can be used in drug therapy for cancer patients. And this little picture, you can see, um, if this is the chain that we're making, and that's the molecule that it works on. We want to design an uh, inhibitor that will stop it from binding and then stop it from carrying out the reaction and stopping the cell from keep on splitting out abnormally. Sorry. These are my references. Acknowledgement from my mentor, Queen College. Everyone I went to in my life, um, Dr. Tavish, and everyone for the same. Uh, what exactly is the definition of kinase? Kinase? Oh, okay. So, uh, so basically, a kinase is an enzyme that transfers the phosphate group from one molecule to another. And kinase? It's, an, it's a type of enzyme, and this enzyme basically transfers a phosphate group. That's its main job. Okay. 